Okay, let's look at the same procedure. I'm guessing a number, but instead of using f and else, or a nested f else or else f structure, let's try a switch statement. And we can do the same thing. And in this case, what we want to switch on would be player guess. And our cases could be the individual numbers. And in a switch statement, basically you'll build cases for every expression, and you'll follow it with break. And as an example of what I could switch on, um, a very simple decision, like I could switch on a number or an integer, or I could switch on a single character, but what I could not switch on would be a string. Um, couldn't switch on a whole string there. And I couldn't do a complex expression, like here, if I do player guess, I'm fine, but I, I couldn't say if player guess evaluates to the number um, or is greater than the number. Um, yes, I can do that in, in if the, in the condition portion of an if statement, but I, I can't do evaluate complex expressions like that in a switch. A switch is a very simple decision structure. So back to the variable at hand. Um, player guess. And in this case, I want to go through and I'll just build my cases. And And actually, we'll we'll take out zero there. But so in this case, we have a case in our switch. Um, you know, for all of the possibilities, one through ten, or guessing a number one through ten. And I could say, in each one of these, um. You know, I could say this all the way down, and then have follow that with my break. And that's normally what you want. Normally, you're always going to want to put break um, after a case. If you don't, what would happen if, if I took this break out? Then program flow would continue all the way down um, until it got to the first break. And although that's not, you know, your, your program will compile. There'll be no syntax errors, but you'll have logic errors or logic problems, you'll wonder why certain cases keep executing when they're not supposed to. And that could be as simple, um, you know, oftentimes y you maybe just forgot to put a break after the case. And that would keep it from going and executing the cases beneath it. So most of the time, this is the structure of a switch statement. You're always going to follow each case with a break. But in this one instance, um, we're not going to. And this, there are a few situations where by design, you may want to leave off the break. And the reason is, is without having to do all this code multiple times, I'm just going to leave this off. And if he guesses one um, through six, you know, either way, since there's no break here, these cases, if they're met, will simply fall through till it gets to six. And it would tell us that the number is larger. Um, on the other hand, <coughs> if he guesses it, Let's let him know that he guesses it. And again, we'll want to break here. You want to tell him that he guesses it. Um, we'll tell him you guessed it. And then the same thing for 8 and 9. You know, if we put no break there, and put a break here, we could tell him the number is smaller. 
So, you know, the first way we did this, we used if and else if. We looked at, and, you know, nesting and al also else if. And let's go ahead and compile this. And again, you can see that the behavior is, is still pretty much the same. But two different types of decision structures are being employed. Switch statements are, are very common, at least in console programs, for things like menus or very simple, quick decisions that you know don't involve complex comparisons or evaluations. So I'm just going to run this. And it's going to say, "Hey, what's my number from one through ten? And I'll enter five. And it's telling me that the number is larger. And what happens is it's going down and it's looking at the cases one, two, three, four, five, and it finally gets to six and tells me the number is larger and then breaks and it leaves that switch statement. All right, and let me just let me increase the font size a little bit here. Maybe this will make things a bit easier to see. There you go. So again, I'm just going down all my cases. Now I'm going to run it again. This time I'm going to enter an 8 which would skip all of these cases, but again, since there's no break for case 8 or case 9, it'll fall through and go all the way to case 10. So in, th in this situation, yes, it's what we want, but a lot of times, that's a logic issue. A lot of times, y you do it inadvertently, you don't mean to, and you, you simply forget and leave it out, and it ends up being a logic issue. You're wondering, why, is, you know, why are other cases executing when I only want one particular case to execute? and then break. Well, the reason is, is you left the breakout. But in this example, it works for us or in our favor that we leave the breaks out because if I enter an 8 or a 9, it'll tell me that the number is smaller. And again, let's see what happens if I give it the exact number. You guess it. And again, it goes down, finds case 7, hits, sees the break, and exits the switch statement. So we're fine there.